When Statistics Canada reports gross domestic product, and we can see here for 2016, they're reporting gross domestic product based on the expenditure approach is just over $2 trillion. When we're reporting that it's $2 trillion, that money for using the expenditure approach is based on household spending, business spending, government spending, and spending by the rest of the world, so net exports. The challenge is, is that number, that two, mil, that two trillion, has some issues. It's not exactly accurate. And that's because where do we get this information from? A lot of times when we're gathering information to calculate gross domestic product, it's relying on businesses and households to report either their income, if it's the income approach, or we're looking at businesses reporting um, the goods, the value of what they sold in terms of the expenditure approach. So it all has to come to be reported to the government. And so this can create challenges because not everything is reported to the government. So let's look at some of the challenges with accurately reporting GDP. There are some challenges with the accuracy. There's also challenges because certain things are excluded. So let's look at this in more detail. All right, so let's actually just make a list. And this list is the problems with counting GDP. The first problem with counting GDP is that when we talk about gross domestic product, gross domestic product is the total value of all final goods and services. So GDP does not include intermediate goods. Let's look at why that is. So let's suppose that you're looking at the ingredients in a cake. So what are some of the ingredients in the cake? Maybe we have sugar, flour, eggs, and let's look at the price of those. So how much is the value of the eggs that are in a cake? And I'm just going to make up numbers here. Let's suppose that there is a dollar worth of eggs in a cake, $2 worth of sugar in a cake, uh, $2 worth of flour in a cake. Okay. Now, we could pay for those ingredients. We could make a cake. But what if you go to Sobeys and you buy a cake? How much are you paying for that cake? Well, when you buy a cake at Sobeys, let's say you're paying 20 bucks for that cake. If when we count GDP, we include the cake at Sobeys, the 20 bucks, and we include the sugar, the flour, the eggs, all bought by Sobeys, then we've actually double counted. Because where does this 20 bucks come from? The 20 bucks that Sobeys charges from the cake is the ingredients in the cake plus the cost for them to make it, so labor, wear and tear on the equipment, and some profit. So if we count both the $5 for the sugar, flour, and eggs and the 20 bucks for the cake, we've just counted the sugar, flour, and eggs twice because they're inside that 20 bucks. So when we look at counting GDP, remember GDP is the total value of all final goods and services produced in a country in a specific period of time, typically a year. The reason that we're just looking at the final goods is because we don't want to double count, which can make it a challenge. Because let's suppose that you, you make wedding cakes. Now, if you go and you buy your materials, your sugar, your flour, and your eggs at Sobeys, can, does Sobeys know that you are buying that material to make cakes? How do they know whether you're buying it to make that, to make a cake and sell it, or whether you are just buying those materials to make a cake at home and enjoy it? 
So the problem is it's hard to distinguish. So we attempt to do that because most companies will buy wholesale for their materials rather than buying them at, say, the grocery store. So that allows us to estimate a bit in terms of whether something is an intermediate good or a final good. But because of this challenge, because we have a lot of small businesses that might buy their, their materials at Costco or Sobeys, it can be difficult to accurately count GDP. The second problem with counting GDP is that GDP includes sales tax. So when we look at the value of what is being sold, C plus I plus G plus X minus IM, the problem is, is that value of what's being sold includes sales tax in it. So what would happen if, for example, we raise the sales tax? Well, the amount of spending that households do on goods and services increases, and it looks like economic growth. GDP goes up. But in fact, all we've done is increase taxes. So that including sales tax is a challenge. Another problem with counting GDP is that it does not reflect a change in the quality of goods. So when we look at GDP as a number, we look at the two trillion in terms of the goods that we make and sell, it doesn't tell you about the quality of goods. And in fact, what we should see over time is that when we introduce something of new and better quality, often it's expensive at the start and then becomes cheaper over time. So if the amount that households are paying for those goods is falling, it looks like GDP is declining, but it could simply be because it now costs less to make it, that quality is now uh, easier to do, and so we're paying less for it. So it doesn't tell us really about the quality of the goods, it also doesn't tell us about the value to society. So when we look at the amount of spending that we're doing on goods and services, it doesn't really tell you about what we call externalities. Externalities are when you impact someone who's not the buyer or the seller. So for example, Let's suppose you make paper, and your paper, you sell it for $0.10 cents a sheet. Well, that $0.10 cents is based on the cost to make it and the value to the person who's buying it. But it doesn't take into consideration that to make that paper, uh, likely your paper mill had to be next to a river because there's a lot of water involved in making paper, and that can lead to toxins and pollutants in the water system, a negative externality something that hurts people who are not the buyers and not the sellers. The 10 cents for the paper is only based on the value to the customer and the cost to the business. It does not include the impact on people who are not the buyers or the sellers. And so we have to look at GDP in terms of it doesn't necessarily represent the greater value to society. Could be negative, like pollution, but it could also be positive. For example, when more people get college degrees, the crime rate in the town tends to go down, the average income in the town tends to go up, even for people who are not getting the college degree. So there's a benefit to society if more people get college education, but the actual price that you pay is based on demand and supply, the business and the customer only. Now there are two other things that are problems with counting GDP. The fifth one here is that we care more about real GDP than nominal GDP. When we talk about the GDP of Canada being over two trillion dollars that's in nominal terms. That is, if we take the price of all the goods and services in the price they are now and the quantity they are sold now, we get nominal GDP. The challenge this creates is that what if between this year and next year we make the exact same amount of goods, 
but we charge more for all of them. Inflation. Prices go up. Well, nominal GDP would increase, and this would tend to suggest that the economy has grown. So we actually care more about real GDP, which is where we take out inflation. And in fact, in the coming levels, we're going to look at how do you take out inflation? How do you find real GDP? Lastly, the problem with counting GDP is that there are parts of it that are not accurately reported. So for example, maybe you're self-employed. If you've ever been self-employed, one thing you do when you fill out your taxes is you think of every possible deduction you can come up with. Why? So you pay less taxes. But that also means that the income that you are reporting from your business, you're reporting a lower income. And so that's making GDP less. Or maybe you have worked as waitstaff. Maybe you've been a waiter or a waitress. Did you report all of your tips? in your taxes. Well, you probably didn't. And it's that report of your income that's what goes into our national income measure for GDP. So if we're not reporting it, then it's not being counted, and so the size of our economy then is not accurate. So we could look, for example, at some scenarios like tips or maybe you grow your own food on the farm. Uh, we could look at doing home repair, being self-employed. All of those have issues in terms of accuracy because if we are bartering, so we're trading goods for goods, it doesn't tend to get reported as sales to the government. If we are doing, or if we're self-employed or we have tips, we don't tend to report all of it as income to the government and all of these fall under GDP.